Hello guys and thank you for joining me. My name is Eugen and today we will be looking at the Parker Jotter fountain pen. This is literally my second ever actual Parker fountain pen. I used to have a vector, um, can't really remember what happened to it, but I remember I was not very impressed by it and probably disappeared somewhere during a spring cleaning event. Who knows what happened to it? These pens were, I mean, the ones that I'm showing right now, were a little bit of a slippery slope towards Park and Fountain pens, as you'll get to see in future reviews um, that I have planned. These jotters uh, were one of uh, those kind of an impulse buy that you do on Amazon. And don't ask me why, but somehow I end up with two of them. The good part about it is that at least we're gonna get to compare them. This one, uh, it's called a classic version. Should be interesting. And I assume this one it's the modern version. They didn't specify, but that was my assumption. Is there a difference? I don't know. Let's find out. So, um, body-wise, as you can see them, they're pretty fairly similar, just that one is um, basically all stainless steel, body and cap, and the other one, which is the classic, it's in theory, well not in theory, it is just a stainless steel cap and a plastic body. And as you could probably see already, there might be a small difference, at least in length, I think. Yep. The classic one looks like the barrel is a little bit longer. Caps, though, they pretty much look exactly the same. And they both have the same breather hole, I assume is that, right under the clip. The material seems to be exactly the same. And the uh, top, well, it doesn't really have a finial, it's just a plain dome, looks exactly the same. And the barrel ends, they look exactly the same as well, at least the way it's finished, uh, shape wise. The only difference is, is that the classic one has the injection mold. Uh, gate in there and while the stainless steel one it's just stamped as i said the caps are the same so if you remove them you can actually interchange them so there's not a huge difference between them if any actually personally i don't see any difference and once you remove the caps you will have basically the same section by the looks of it and both do come with a, let me get close up in here, a medium nib. And there, and there. Yeah. And the nibs are exactly the same. Sections are exactly the same. The only difference that I see without removing the barrel is that the injection mold seam it's more visible visible on the modern one and it's absolutely not visible uh, on the classic one i guess they don't build them as they used to funny thing about the nibs as far as i know the nibs are not removable they are um, I, I looked around to see if you can find uh, fine nibs and you can find however you basically have to buy the entire section. Nibs do not come uh, separate, which is kind of interesting because buying a new section, it's around, let's say, 13 Canadian dollars. And the classic one cost me 15 Canadian dollars. Um, so basically it's like buying a new pen. It's really odd. The only difference is this one was a little bit more expensive. Uh, actually more than double, was about 35 Canadian dollars, which is odd, but color me curious. Now, when we remove the barrels, we're going to see more differences between the sections. The modern one 
seems like it has uh, little bumps right here just before uh, the threaded section of uh, of this the threaded part of the section ends so I guess that helps with uh, guiding and centering uh, the barrel because just before those things the barrel is actually quite uh, wobbly come on focus here it's, it's moving quite a lot and once it reaches those bumps it actually centers and uh, seems like it helps with holding down the barrel so it doesn't uh, accidentally open I can actually feel the, um, the barrel um, grazing those bumps with the modern section those uh, bumps were actually replaced by some buttons or dots and again there are three of them so there are some differences between the classic and the modern one is it a huge deal i don't know to be honest i do feel a difference though a difference resistance when i put the metal uh, barrel on the classic one it feels like you force it a little bit more but if i put it on the modern one it feels much better um, and you don't require a lot of uh, effort and it's going to hold that barrel down very nice and easy so i guess i don't think there's going to be any issue with the uh, metal threads on the plastic threads because you don't have to torque it very hard it's actually quite uh, it's there you don't have to force it which is kind of nice both pens when they come they come with uh, this uh, cartridge they do not come with converters however as i discovered you can actually use a uh, hero uh, uh, converters and they fit in perfect actually without an issue and same for the modern one like perfect fit so if you don't want to um, cash out on uh, on the converters that are coming from um, Parker just use the hero ones and the barrels as I was showing the barrel for the classic it's a little bit longer than the barrel for the modern one I guess and inside hold on let me grab my light it's plain nothing special about it and the plastic one pretty much the same just a straight tube what i don't like about the classic one the barrel here feels a little bit sharp and it doesn't really line up with the the cap i feel a, an edge higher up here and once you remove it that edge is actually very sharp i don't like it it's annoying but if you can get around that the pen feels actually pretty nice in hand a little bit top heavy with that cap but still usable nothing wrong with it now the more modern version i guess feels a little bit more balanced because of the the metal um, uh, the metal barrel even cap the balance is still quite quite good it's a little bit still towards the cap but it doesn't feel as heavy as the other one for whatever reason i mean if i go to the other one you'll see that the balance changes a little bit more on the cap now it's not just before the cap so it's a little bit more heavier top with the, with it posted now the pen the cap sorry 
let me bring my flashlight back uh, does have a plastic inner liner as far as I can see so it won't damage the, the metal barrel when you post it and this edge on the barrel doesn't feel as sharp as the plastic one which is a nice surprise and I actually like it more to be honest so for now I think I'm gonna put the classic one aside and I will be using only the um, modern one in theory the nibs are the same so it shouldn't be a difference they're both medium and uh, when I was testing them on the paper they both felt pretty smooth uh, no issues with them even reverse it's exactly the same on both pens as far as I remember since I'm using a part Parker fountain pen I thought it was only um, fair to use Parker ink since I do have it so I'll be using the quick black if you're not using the cartridge and you manage to find a converter that fits as usual put the piston down dunk the section in the ink fill it once to prime the feed filling the second time to get a full fill and this converter seems to hold pretty good amount of ink now let's see if it actually works hopefully there's no air leaks cleans up quite nicely those uh, you might get some ink in those rings but if you press hard enough and I guess if you don't use carbon ink they'll clean up quite nicely again this is a medium nib I'm not sure how well it's gonna work out for my drawing but I guess we're gonna see so this is Parker Chatter yeah this is way too <laughs> this is way too uh, medium this to me is, is more of a broad medium to broad should be interesting for my drawing but it definitely gives a very consistent line okay so reverse it does work quite nicely and it does gives me a more finer line so I'll probably use it a lot on reverse and seems to work quite well okay I like it so far okay I'll be honest I don't know if I like this medium it feels like I don't even know how to write now that I have a pretty right uh, now that I have a pretty writing but like it's worse with medium <laughs> I do think though it could, uh, it could use a little bit of smoothing nothing wrong with the nib it works well it just feels like for my taste it grabs the page maybe a little bit too much but I see no issue with the name. Works very well as it should be. And it's fairly wet. Let's see how it's going to perform for a longer period and if I'm going to be able to actually use it for a drawing after I wash my hands. Damn. Okay, I'll be right back. See you soon. 
for today's drawing I wanted to try out something a little bit different. I don't have an image source that I've been using, it's something that I had in my head. I've been uh, lightly sketching it, basically just going to be like a detail of a uh, tree's bark and uh, there's a hollow in the tree and something lurking in the dark and you get to only see the eyes or something like that. As to what it is, I'll leave your imagination to it. Um, I didn't want it to go too crazy since I'm not sure exactly how that medium nib is going to perform and um, I don't want to commit to something that will have a lot of detail in it if I can't actually reproduce it. So I'll get to it and I'll see you soon with conclusions.
All right, so I think I am done. Um, funny story for the keen eye, you'll probably notice that um, the drawing looks slightly different than uh, what I presented <laughs> uh, when I presented the sketch. Um, well, what happened is um, I had a weird issue with the, uh, with the pen. Basically, the Parker Quink ink that I used, for whatever reason, when I started drawing on this paper, it was very dry, which was really weird. Based on the writing test that I did, I was expecting it to be wet and nice uh, to, um, you know, uh, you know, medium, and you will... Uh, put some nice lines on the paper, but it wasn't like that. And for whatever reason, also when I was speeding, what happened was um, actually getting even drier and uh, the lines were thinner and uh, it was a little bit frustrating and I got ticked off a little bit. <laughs> um, so this is the first drawing that I did. Um, I have, I'll run a video here on the left side just to see the idea of how he was looking. And uh, I really dislike the fact that for whatever reason, this ink uh, was doing some weird uh, stripes, as you see from the video in the corner. So in the end, I actually end up using a, a brush, trying to sort of make uh, something uniform. That didn't work out, and then the contrast between these two was really odd, so I started playing with the brush and kind of made everything uh, darker, but at the same time, I kind of lost the lines. So I tried to redo the lines, and uh, this ink behaves weird. I mean, I kind of like the result, but it's not what I uh, envisioned, so I said, screw it. And uh, well, basically I rinsed the pen and I went back to my trusty platinum carbon ink and I finally got the result that I was trying to get uh, from the beginning. So this was my second attempt. Anyway, basically I have two drawings in the end. Um, no fault on the pen though, I think uh, was no fault on the pen for whatever reason, like I said, uh, quaking with this jotter on this paper, they didn't want to behave, I don't know why. And went back to my carbon platinum. Anyway, I've been at it for about uh, <laughs> six hours now and the, uh, yeah, anyway, it's late, it's about 4 a.m. So let me get quickly into the what I like and what I don't like. I'll start with what I like. Well, it's lightweight, it's simple um, and re relatively cheap. Um, compared with a plastic one, it's pretty much double the price. But I would say this is the better pen. I like this more than the plastic one. I, I don't even want to show the plastic one. Um, I like this much better. Pose very well and deep. Um, and I mean, seems to be fairly well designed. I don't have a lot of issues with it. And again, I don't think there will be issues with the plastic and um, the metal threads in here. Because as you can see, the the metal threads don't don't go all the way, and uh, the the barrel actually meets the section pretty nice and well. You just the only thing you gotta be careful is uh, you can actually crisscross these threads. You can start them wrong, so it just goes slow, and then keep it slow without tightening it. Uh, like and as soon as it butts the section, stop. Don't over tighten, don't nothing. It will not uh, open up on you. Just, just stop and that's it, you're done. And if you treat it like that, I think the pen will last you quite a long time without an issue. So there seems to be some thinking behind it. So props, I guess. <laughs> um, 
another positive is uh, well uh, you can use hero converters if you don't want to um, uh, shell out for Parker converters which they're actually more expensive um, and that's about it for positive again Nib performs well, I have no issue with it. Uh, it was wet, except that weird issue that I had with the drawing. I don't know why. Um, and uh, yeah, going into the cons. Nibs. <laughs> you cannot replace the nibs easily. You actually have to replace the entire section. And I look for the prices. So the pen, let's say it's about 35 Canadian dollars. Um, now the price for... <laughs> For the section, it's about uh, 15, 16 Canadian dollar, dollars if you want to find nib and shipping, it's not a 10, 15 Canadian dollars. So basically, <laughs> to just buy the entire section with shipping is like buying the entire freaking pen to begin with. So, what's the point? And you cannot find this in fine. You everywhere I looked, it only comes with medium. <laughs> so it's it's an odd choice, and I do not understand it. Um, like I mentioned, I'm a little bit worried about the plastic threads, and I think if you don't pay attention and uh, you're not being gentle with it, yeah, you could crisscross it, and you could most probably damage it. However, if you're being gentle with it and you pay attention, uh, and again, you don't over tighten it, it just as soon as it butts on the section, it's fine. But still, it's worrying me. I, I'm going back to the converters. Biggest issue is that there's no converter included with it, which is kind of a bummer. And uh, I think um, it's maybe a little bit thin. So. If you do have some issues with uh, using thinner um, pens, um, this will probably not be for you. So, would I recommend it in the end? That's the big question. Um, hard. I mean, as a pen, it's not a bad pen. It works well, it, draw, it, it writes well, it draws well, but I think the price, in my opinion, is too expensive. For an entry level pen, I think this version should have been a $15 Canadian pen. And that I could understand it better. And maybe the plastic one, maybe make it $10. So the issue with this is at $35 Canadian dollars, I can find much better fountain pens that you can replace the nibs for much, much cheaper and much easier. And um, if you really want a Parker, like a le uh, entry level Parker, I would say save ten, fifteen dollars more and buy the Parker I am. Um, it, it's a much better pen, uh, and um, the price difference is not that big. And I think if you shop around, you can find the I am for uh, I am even for cheaper. So. Yeah, I mean, um, that's about it regarding this pen. I, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. I think it's a good pen. It's just, I don't know, from my opinion, it's still overpriced for what it is, right? And um, yeah, I mean, I like the pen. I'll, I'll definitely keep it now that I have it and I'm not going to... Um, miss, um, <laughs> um, lose it by mistake in a cleanup during um, spring. I, I'll keep it. I like it. It's just I can't really recommend it. Anyway, it's late. I'm obviously rambling most probably and um, I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to end it here. Thank you kindly for joining me. I wish you a uh, Good night <laughs> and a beautiful day wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Take care guys. Have a <laughs> have a good night. Bye. <laughs>